Good afternoon, everyone. My name is State Representative Dolan. I am here with four ladies from the Child and Family Agency. And I am excited because we're at a really wonderful place that they're going to talk about. But I wanted them to introduce themselves, starting from the right, if you will, please. Absolutely. I'm Lisa Otto. I'm the CEO of Child and Family Agency. Yes. Judy Madwell, nurse coordinator for the Urgent Crisis Center. I am Erin Saylor, the chief operating officer. I'm Caitlin Ogilvie, I'm the director of the Urgent Crisis Center. Um, I'm Ashley Chalamar, and I'm the behavioral health coordinator at the Urgent Crisis Center. So we are at the Child and Family Urgent Crisis Center, something that we just uh, received in the city of New London. And it's exciting because this is some of the really important mechanisms that we need to have in order to make sure that our children get the help they want on a much quicker basis. So um, I don't know who's going to start, but I'm hoping that someone can explain how this came to fruition. Absolutely. I'll start and then I'll pitch it over okay. to everyone else. So the Urgent Crisis Center came into being as the state recognized that we had more and more youth who were experiencing mental health crisis and that the emergency department was really their only stop. So we had more and more youth in crisis sitting in emergency departments, often for long periods of time, but the emergency department was struggling to try to care for them appropriately while they were dealing with medical crises and adult crises, and also recognized we need something better for our kids. So the Urgent Crisis Center came about in an effort to have a more kid-friendly and family-friendly place that kids and families in crisis could walk in and get a wraparound assessment and get some help with the next step, whatever the next step may be, and really try to avoid hospitalization for as many kids in crisis as possible. So the service, you're kind of saying the service just adjusts the placement where the child might go, um, one, and be in a more comfortable environment and take less time to get the services that are needed. Now, can someone tell us where this urgent care center is located? So we are located at 255 Hempstead Street here in New London, and we have a very comfortable setting where it's actually an old building that used to be used as a child guidance clinic back in the day that's been renovated back to its roots of being able to service youth in the area. So all the, the rooms look kind of like this, where it's got comfortable uh, furniture, we have windows, we've got artwork, and it feels more like a therapy office versus um, being in an ED. And what, what are the hours, like when parents need you, um, what are the hours that they can contact you? So they're always expanding. Um, right now we're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, we're going to be opening over the weekend, hopefully this weekend. We're still ironing out a couple of things, but the latest the following weekend from 11 to 11. Okay, and as far as a number to contact, if they need to come or do they come in person, how do they get here? So we can have anyone just walk in during those hours. If you'd like to call ahead, you can call our main line at 860-437-4550. And we're option one, it directs you right to the Urgent Crisis Center right away. Uh, we also, I just want to mention, have bilingual staff. So if there's individuals who need to speak to someone in Spanish, we have the ability to offer services in Spanish. Okay. And uh, what kind of staff will they find when they come here? And how will the staff work with them? Um, you know, is, is it something that, you know, is a little bit more comforting than the hospital? Can you explain that? Yeah, so we have a multidisciplinary staff here. Um, we have nurses on hand, we have um, clinicians, and we have um, peer support specialists um, that are really connecting with the parents and helping them through this process. Um, we have behavioral health interventionists, uh, client support specialists, and discharge planners. Um, so our discharge planner is really unique to us. They are reaching out to the family after they've discharged from us and making sure that they're connecting to their next service um, and seeing if there's any extra support we can offer them in the interior. So you're literally saying that you can provide a follow-up service yes. um, where sometimes the hospital have, has a difficult time doing that because, you know, the parent leaves the hospital and Sometimes it's too far to go back or they get lost in between, you know, all the mechanisms the hospital has. So when your child 
comes here, um, there is a follow-up program or follow-up with the staff from here. Um, now, you you have some really cool, comfortable furniture here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm almost getting ready to you know, <laughs> <laughs> just allow the back and chill out. Now, how many um, rooms do you have that are set up like this so that when kids come, you know, they can have their own personal space or be comfortable enough to relax and, and talk easily? Yeah, we have 11 rooms that are set up like this eight in the back building and three here in the front building. And it's both. It's an effort to create comfortable private spaces. And also when families come in, if they're not getting along with each other real well because things have been difficult before they left the house, mm -hmm. we have space and staffing so that families can take a little bit of a break and catch their breath and each work with different staff members to figure out what's going on, what they need to be successful, and then come back together again after everyone's caught their breath a little. Okay, and could you give an explanation of what might be considered an emergency um, that people might use this um, assistance for? Sure. Um, well, everyone's emergency could look different. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a lot of children struggling with suicidal ideation, um, being bullied in school, struggling to get to school because they're just frozen with fear, um, lots of anxiety for some of these children. And coming to a place like this where their mental health is the priority, mm -hmm. airway, breathing, circulation, that's an emergency room. Yeah. Here, their mental health is a priority. So they're never taking a second seat to anyone else. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. they come in and their mental health is our priority. And we make sure to not only care for the child, but the parent. Because a child in crisis has a parent in crisis. Correct. And like you said, by the time they get here to this point, it's a long journey. Right. So we recognize that our families are tired, they need help, and they've kind of been put on the back burner when they're entering a medical facility with mental health needs. But here they're the priority. Now, there's this stigma that goes around in our community, sometimes more with youth than adults, but it's still a stigma either way. Can someone explain how it's important and it's okay to talk about having mental health issues in our community, especially in sometimes the black and brown community, because mm -hmm. we struggle sometimes a little bit more, I think, when it comes to getting the urgent care needs for mental health. Can someone explain how it's something that just happens? In, in, yes. in, I think it's always important to remember that mental health is just like physical health in the sense that it's a continuum. We all have it no matter what part of the continuum is on. And so there are times that people have experienced different adversities that might impact their mental health. Um, sometimes there's things that are just outside of control in terms of like genetics and uh, situational factors that play a huge role in um, people's mental health. And so what I would always remind people is that it's on a continuum and that it's okay to seek help and that by going through a service like this, I think it's really important to know that culture is, is honored and respected and brought into the group as well as the family. And I think that's one of the unique things about the UCC is that we are pulling the family in as the expert on their child. They know better than we do about what their child's needs are and um, we're here to support them and guide them through that process to help them feel okay in accessing whatever services might benefit them the most. We say our goals at the UCC are uh, um, we want people to leave more hopeful mm -hmm. um, about their next steps. We want people to feel empowered um, that they are able to and have a, a roadmap on how to support their child in their mental health journey um, and then motivated to engage in those because they have that hope to do so. So. Um, we work really hard to sort of wrap around the entire family, so that's how they leave us. Yeah. So, would you agree um, that children or young kids do not come with a instruction book? I totally understand. And because they don't come with an instruction book, there's a lot of things that their parents don't understand, sure, yeah. and that is okay for parents even to ask for yes, help. Absolutely. I always use the analogy when I'm talking to caregivers that, you know, kids all have unique needs. And so sometimes, like, my favorite analogy to use, honestly, is one about a car. So if you bought a new fancy car where the only way to turn it on was not just to turn the key, but to also push a button, you wouldn't return the car saying there's something wrong with the car because you know buying it, like, this is something unique to that client. 
or to that car. Um, so it's it's kind of like humans are just like that. We all have unique needs and how we get our needs met. And yeah. so parents are not always going to have right out the gate all the answers. And every child is different. So what worked for your other children may not work for this unique individual. So right. with other kids, you may have been able to just turn the key, right? Yeah. But this one, you have to hit that button and turn that key. And that's the only way to be able to support that child properly, so to speak. Um, so I think, you know, helping caregivers understand and reduce that shame that sometimes attaches they're not meeting their kids' needs, we can support them in figuring out how they can best meet their needs because they have it in them already. It's just how to tap it or tweak it so that they have the, they have the tools already. Right. So, so you, so it's important for people to understand that no matter how many siblings that you have in the house, you're different from yeah. one another. Exactly. So, yes. you know, some siblings have different problems than other siblings and some siblings have less problems. Mm -hmm. um, so it's okay to share the problems mm -hmm. and just because your sibling doesn't have a problem doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means right. that you need a little extra you need help. A little something different than what your sibling needs, and that's yeah. okay. And I think it also, when you help families understand that, particularly caregivers, it can reduce that shame because it's like, okay, there's not something wrong with me as a parent. It's just this kid needs something a little different, and yeah. now I can figure out what that is and support them. And we're here as, a, as an agency and as, an, as a UCC to be able to support families and figuring out what how they can tweak their thing with their skills to be able to meet that kid's unique needs. Okay. And I also think we're all parents. Yeah. And we all have huge personal humility. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Recognizing as our own kids have grown and developed, they hit challenges that, like, I don't know that any of us thought we would ever be facing. No. So there's like this huge humility about like the fact that your kid's doing great one year doesn't mean they're going to be doing great the next year. And like as much as we all individually try as well as professionally, we don't always know. So it's like it's all of us. Our kids all they struggle in different ways. Their struggles look different. You know, you might have one child who, when they're having a really hard time, they get quiet and it's hard to get them to come out of their room. Yeah. You might have another child that is willing to fight anybody, and all you're getting is calls from the school mm -hmm. that your kid is getting into fights and they're being disrespectful with teachers and they're suspended again. Right. Um, and it's just like, as a parent, I don't know that you always set out prepared to deal with that or prepared to recognize that all of that's mental health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what about... Transportation. I mean, we're you know that's such a hard thing for some parents, um, and I know that even we as legislators need to work on some kind of funding mechanism to try and help with transportation. Um, so when kids have to come here and they don't have transportation, what is usually recommended for parents? Great question. Yeah. I don't know is that it, we have a great solution for that. Well, sometimes an ambulance, you know. Um, so we're struggling. Like we're yeah. struggling with ambulance transportation. The state still has to iron some wrinkles out around that yeah. because we're very concerned that if um, the UCC isn't a destination that insurance is covered. Okay. For ambulance transport, that families might wind up with significant bills, and we really, really don't want that to happen. So at this point, I think we're doing a lot of like problem solving with families about how, how can you arrive? Yeah, is it possible for you to get here? Is there any way that we can help you piece together? So one thing like that I need to work on as a legislator with other legislators then is to try and find a funding mm -hmm. mechanism that helps parents pay for any kind of emergency transportation. Yeah, I think from, that's absolutely true. Okay, and, and I'm sure that when other legislators see this um, recording that they'll definitely start thinking in that way because I think that it is something that is real important um, so parents are not stuck with this big continuation of a bill exactly. um, for getting services that their child needs so dearly um, that should not be a barrier for parents or the child to come here so um, I know that's something that we will have to look into working on 
The other thing is they piggybacking on that is that since there are only four urgent crisis centers in the state, it means we're covering a really large geography. So if you Correct. think about transportation barriers just from London County families to get here, then you multiply it when you think we also serve Wyndham County and we serve Middlesex. Mm -hmm. And we really, really want Willimantic families right. to be able to get here. Right. So absolutely second your thoughts yeah. about that requirement. So, so you get children from New London, Groton, Norwich, Willimantic, all the way down to East Line, Middletown, Old Sabre. Old Sabre. So you take on a lot of uh, headaches um, from other areas. And, and I guess I shouldn't even say headaches, um, emergency treatment from other yes. areas because it's not actually a headache, it's just uh, it alleviates a headache for the parent to have to go through the hospital to be able to come here is an easier way maybe of saying it. But we don't want to be just for those that are privileged not to have transportation. Right? Correct. We want to serve the underserved. We want to take care of everyone. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm telling you, this, it, you know, I really want parents and children to know that there is an outlet and there's a place for them to come and get the assistance that's needed with mental health. There is no problem and there is nothing wrong with getting help for mental health. Um, that is something that people all over the world deal with. And uh, we want to make sure that we um, allow this space here to be used in the way that it's now created to be used in. So um, if you need that emergency care, uh, please, um, so someone can say the number again um, for the, the watchers and the address and then um, if each of you can close out with something that you're so proud about here um, that is helping um, our communities. So our address is 255 Hempstead Street, New London, Connecticut, and our phone number is 860-437-4550. Um, so I'm um, really proud of um, the dedication and commitment from our staff to supporting families when they are here. Um, everybody works together um, and it's helping one another to support the family. Um, if that means sitting with kid on playing Uno while mom fills out some paperwork, um, that's what's happening. So. I am definitely proud to be working at the UCC. I am so excited by the work that we're doing and just expanding the safety net for children across this area uh, and ensuring that there is this wrap piece happening where the caregiver is involved in the process and is not left out as a caregiver myself. The idea of not being part of the solution is terrifying to me. And so to be part of something where we are um, pulling the caregiver in and tapping into them as the expert of their family, I think it's just so important and vital. And um, you know, it's been amazing to see the team come together and to service the, the 69 youth that have come through um, and provide these services where they're linking them to all different types of things that are impacting families from, you know, uh, you know, food insecurity to housing insecurity to not having a medical provider and feeling stressed about that. So it's just been amazing to watch the team really look at the whole system and not just one little piece of the problem. So similarly, um, we have a really incredible, diverse staff um, that are just talented, passionate, smart individuals that are so committed to this mission um, and meeting every family that walks through the door um, where they're at and supporting them. And I think that the, the access to care and the, the warm handoff to ensure because I think that um, when you're in crisis, it's hard to take all the information and remember what's being said. So you leave and you have really great providers in the hospital and you know wherever you are, but you're like, what did that doctor say? What did that therapist, you know what I mean? It's just hard to remember. So they get a comprehensive safety plan that's written up along with the discharge plan and they have a discharge plan calling them the next day saying, how are you doing? Were you able to get to that appointment? I talked to this provider, they're ready for it. You know, and they're really ensuring that um, they're cared for until we can care for them via the phone until they get to where they need to go. It's proud of it all. Um, <laughs> I'm really proud um, of the work we're doing, like reaching out to the community after each after each visit, um, depending on the child's specific needs. So whether 
and then I've been able to, to speak to like counselors and to other school nurses and implement little things that are going to have a big impact for these children. Um, and to still stay as that part of continuity of care, mm-hmm. that even though they've left our premises, they know that we're still working for them. We're still here for them. And the other thing I'd say I'm proud to tell children is um, when they come in and they explain what our center is, and I explain it to the parents as well, I take it and I let them know that we exist because so many kids just like them are struggling across the state of Connecticut. And the these are overflowing, and most of them are blown away by it. You know, they don't realize that they're part of something greater. They're not alone. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about stigma, stigmas and shame, you can all see that melt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's the moment when I feel most proud because it's like we really have somewhere to start. Mm-hmm. We're okay. You're not alone. Got you. Right. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Sort of seconding what Judy said, I think um, the fact that when we see people come through here, the parents and caregivers are stressed out and desperate. The kids are, it's everything you were talking about, are really uncomfortable about having a mental health crisis, about um, seeking help. A lot of them are not super happy to be here. And their response when they leave just feels so different. It's like, okay, I feel some hope. I feel safer. But this actually was okay. I know what the next step is, and it's not something awful. It's very, and that feels just feels huge. Yeah. And then they can go back in the community and tell their friends too. Like, no, like it actually was okay. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it. Um, Child and Family Urgent Care Center on Hempstead Street, um, and. They are open and they are ready and waiting if you're needed. Uh, if it's needed, please reach out. Um, do not feel like mental health is something that you can't get help for um, because there is help for you. Uh, my name is Anthony Nolan. I am the state representative for the city of New London, Connecticut. But I hope everyone throughout Connecticut sees this and learns about it and shares it because this is the important things we need to share to let our communities know. Thank you ladies so much for taking the time uh, to do this. Um, And we hope to uh, get people the need, the the things they need and and, uh, do some great things. Thank you so much. And for helping to spread the word.